Hello, fifth graders. We are back to read another chapter from Save Me a Seat. So far, we have read three chapters, two from Ravi's perspective and one from Joe's perspective. Chapter four is going to be all about Joe. And we are still on Monday. All right. It's Monday, so the cafeteria is serving chicken fingers with canned peas and apple slices. I had a big breakfast, and it's only 11.30, but I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. For real. I go through the line as fast as I can. Ethan and Evan and I used to eat at the round table near the milk machine, but things are different now, and I have to lie low. After I pay for my food, I carry my tray over to the other side of the cafeteria, keeping my head down the whole time. So far, so good. There's a long table against the back wall. Nobody ever sits there because it's near the trash cans. Fifth grade has the first lunch period though, so I figure the smell won't be too bad yet. I sit down, put in my earplugs, and inhale everything on my plate in about three seconds. I'm still hungry, but I don't want to take any chances going back for more. As I'm sucking down the last of my chocolate milk, I notice someone sitting all the way down at the other end of the table. It's that shrimpy new kid from my class. The one with the big glasses and the long name who sits in front of me now. He's got this weird looking lunchbox open in front of him and he's eating something that kind of looks like scrambled eggs. Robert Prinsenthal walks by and accidentally bumps my shoulder. At least, I think it's an accident. Robert is another Dylan Samreen wannabe. The difference between him and Tom Dinkins is that Robert isn't so mean when he's on his own. Sorry about that, putty tat, he says, and keeps going. My name is Joe Sylvester, but thanks to Dylan Samreen, I am known as, at school as putty tat. It's on account of that thing that Tweety Bird always says to Sylvester the Cat on the old Looney Tunes cartoons. You know, I taught I taught a putty tat. I wish people would just call me Joe. But when Dylan Samreen decides he's going to call you something, whether you like it or not, that's what everyone else is going to call you too. So at school, I am putty tat. Putty or pud for short. Giving a person a nickname is a way of saying you like them, my mother said when she found out about it. Trust me, mom, I told her. Dylan Samreen does not like me. What's not to like, she asked, kissing the top of my head. She always does stuff like that, which is why we have to have the big, or why we had to have the big talk this morning. Please pretend you don't even know me, I told her, and promise you won't do any of your corny mom stuff. I promise, she said, and then she made an X over her heart with her finger. We'll see, I thought. The new kid is busy eating his lunch, and I'm done with mine, so I just sit there for a while watching Dylan Samreen. I do that a lot, not because I want to, but because I have to. One time in second grade, when I put my jacket down on a bench out on the playground, Dylan filled the pockets with dirt. Another time, he slipped one of those little packets of ketchup in my homework folder and pounded it with his fist to make it pop. He's always grabbing the back of my shirt or trying to punch or trip me when no one's looking. His favorite thing of all is to sneak up behind me and make a loud noise because he knows how much that freaks me out. It wasn't until last year that I realized Dylan was a klepto. His parents are loaded, which means they're rich or they have a lot of money. So he doesn't need the stuff that he steals. He just does it for fun. He'll take anything he can get his hands on, a pencil, a pencil sharpener, a glove, a retainer case. It really doesn't matter. Whatever it is, he shoves it down the front of his pants for safekeeping. Since I never take my eyes off of him, I've seen him do it a million times. But I don't ever tell on him, because what good would it do? He'd just fast talk his way out of it and find a way to pay me back double. After my mom found the dirt in my pockets, she suspected something might be going on. Is that Samreen boy bothering you? She asked. No, mom, I lied. We can talk to Miss Frost about it, she suggested. No, I shouted. Everything's fine. 
I worry about you, Joey. You never have anyone over to the house. I have lots of friends at school, I told her. Like who? She asked. Ethan and Evan, I said. The Burdock twins, she asked. Those boys are wild. She didn't even know the half of it, really. Ethan once stole his father's car keys and drove around the neighborhood in his pajamas. And even though Evan never got caught, I know for a fact that he was the bathroom ba bandit at Einstein, notorious for drawing dirty pictures on the bathroom walls and throwing wet toilet paper balls on the ceiling. Dylan and his buddies are busy yucking it up, so I figure it's probably a good time for me to go and empty my tray. I guess the new kid must have left when I wasn't looking because he and his funny looking lunchbox are gone now. I pick up my tray and make it as far as the trash cans before my luck runs out. Hey, Pud, Dylan comes over to me and puts his arm around my shoulders. How's it going? My heart starts pounding and I feel myself go wet under the arms. Dylan Samreen is like one of those crocodiles you see on the Discovery Channel lurking underwater with just his eyes showing, waiting to grab anything dumb enough to come within his reach. I'm good, I say, trying to duck out from under his arm. He tightens his grip on my left shoulder and with his other hand pulls the earplug out of my right ear and drops it on the floor and crushes it like a bug with his shoe. In two, three, out two, three. In two, three, out two, three, I think. Listen, Pud, before you go, can I ask you something? He says. I guess so. I look down at my shoes. It feels weird only having one of my earplugs in. I feel lopsided. Is it my imagination? Or does that new lunch monitor look awfully familiar? Dylan puts his mouth so close to my ear it makes me squirm. I don't say anything. I just keep my eyes glued to my shoes. In, two, three, out, two, three. I notice one of my shoelaces has come untied. Take a look, putty, he says, jerking his head back to shake the hair out of his eyes. Tell me if you recognize her too. I don't move. Oh, was that question too hard for you, Pud? Do you need me to make it a little bit slower? Take a look. I don't want to look, but what choice do I have? I lift my head. My mom is standing over near the milk machine. She's wearing a red and white striped apron, and she has a whistle around her neck. When she sees me looking at her, she smiles and blows me a kiss. I honestly think I might be having a heart attack. This is exactly what I was afraid would happen. It's the whole reason we had to have the big talk this morning. My face feels like it's on fire. Come on, Pud, says Dylan. You don't want to hurt her feelings, do you? Blow her a kiss back. What's going on, Dill? asks Tom J Dinkins. He and Robert and this weird kid, Jax, have come over to empty their trays. Pud is about to blow a kiss to his mommy, the lunch monitor, and then she's going to change his diaper. Tom laughs. What the heck? asks Jack. No kidding, Puddy. Is that really your mom? says Robert. The bell rings, making me jump. Suddenly, everybody starts rushing around, cleaning up and getting ready to go to class. Dylan grins and winks at me, then lets go of my shoulder and walks away. He's done with me for now, but I'm not stupid enough to think it's over. My knees are shaking, but I manage to dump my tray and get out of there as fast as I can. The rest of the afternoon is a total waste of time. Mrs. Beam calls on me twice, even though my hand isn't up. It's only the first day of school and fifth grade already sucks. All right, that is where we're gonna stop for this read aloud. That is the end of chapter four. So. We learned in this chapter quite a bit about Joe and his relationship with Dylan Samreen. We learned that Dylan is not a good friend and he is not a nice person. And we've also learned that Joe has a hard time with loud noises. So I want you to think, how would you feel if you were in Joe's position? And what would you do? How would you act? How would you make it better? All right. And there's going to be a Google form for you to fill out a response question uh, to reflect on what we just read.
stay tuned for chapter five.